Hello world, GreatGizaPyramid.com. Today I'm going to try to explain all the pieces of the, py the pyramid puzzle <laughs> and how to put them together and why the way they are. First off, let's start with a few things. Giza Pyramid sits over there in the middle of what today is a big desert. And it kind of hangs out and we have a tripod antenna sitting on the top. And it sits there. The reason that we have that tripod antenna on the top is because without that little tripod antenna, the pyramid itself starts to accumulate a bunch of static electricity. And people could go up there and their hair stands on end and they could do Leyden jar experiments and all sorts of cool stuff like that. The reason it accumulates the electricity, static electricity, is because the 35th row of the pyramid <coughs> is slightly larger and deeper than all the other rows. And what this does is it creates a resistance bubble for that static electricity to get to ground. By us placing the antenna on the top, we alleviate that static electricity, even though no one really climbs up there. But if we were to take that off, we'd actually be generating static electricity. So this would be like a big band graph generator. What the creators of this little toy did is they found a way to pull that static electricity into the system and have it to work. Now how they did that, we have to start really from the basement. And let's start by saying that there was a pool of water around the pyramid. The pool of water. Um, you can go, I, I recommend John Cadman's website. You can go ahead and look him up. I have links to him off my website. And he has a pretty good map of how he feels the layout was. From there, this top edge here would be at the spill level height, and that would come down into the system, and that would just allow water to come into the system. Now this comes down almost to the midway part, and then it comes over flat until it passes the midway part. And actually, I should probably put this in a slightly more angle because I didn't make this quite as wide as I should have. Okay, so give me some artistic license here. And then we have a room down here. I'm going to make it bigger than it is only because I need to demonstrate to you certain things. And I'm not good at doing mouse highlighter. All right, now this has a large room down here. They like to call that the unfinished room or the subterranean chamber. And right before that, they have a pre-subterranean chamber and then a fairly flat area. Now that there, there are pieces in this whole puzzle, and I'm kind of leaving open intentionally. I'm going to get to it. Down in here, there is a large granite rock. Right now, that granite rock sits about there. But in pictures that I will gladly show you if you ask, it actually used to sit right back over here. That's more important when you see what it was doing. And what I didn't draw is in this room they have a large pit. It goes down some 30 feet. Although the, the size isn't as relevant as relationships. Because since this is a machine, and you will understand that in a few moments, it's the relationship. I'm going to make the granite rocks red just so you can see them easier because they're kind of the important things. Now, <coughs> there's a unseen but really important separation that goes right down practically the center of the, of the pyramid. Actually, I, I drew this off, so I'm going to make this bend like that. And that is not only just the center of the pyramid, but it's also the center of the continents. It is what they call the geodesic. Uh, G-E-O-D-E-S-I-C. North and south center. This pyramid actually also happens to sit on the geodesic east and west um, division. But uh, I don't know if that, I don't know if that is as important just yet, but the north and south is. So, 
what happens with this water down here. And we're going to build the rest of the system as it occurs, so that way you'll see what's going on. What's happening with this water down here, and this being the geodesic center of the Earth. And there's also an, another piece of magnetism at play, but you can get all into that uh, in my uh, Magic with Magnetism video and uh, Magnetism Behind the Magic. But just for the sake of argument, this one is going to be bleeding off oxygen. This one's going to be bleeding off hydrogen. It's what kind of today we call electrolysis, only we stimulate it by adding electricity. And here they did it kind of more organically. But the hydrogen which comes out of that room comes over and bubbles into this room. And by actually passing through that barrier, every now and then it's going to strip some of its electrons. Eh, so let's just say, for the sake of argument, it doesn't strip a lot of them because it's a weak magnet. Let's say it strips one out of ten. We'll just go with that number now because the math will all work out later. The oxygen bubbles up to above the water line because water is only going to fill up to there. And it works its way out. Now one thing I didn't draw in here, which is important, and you can see if you go to, uh, well, you know, I'll put links. I'm not going to dig through the pictures right now. This area of the roof line is flat. And then there's a little bubble that goes up, and then the rest of it is not flat. It's kind of ripply. Now, the reason for that is because as the oxygen is bubbling out, it's going to catch in that little bubble and then climb across that flat area. And every time it comes down and hits, it's going to act like a hammer. And in doing so, it's going to be kind of churning this whole mixture. And in churning the mixture, you're going to be getting the hydrogen, or in this case, every now and then a proton all by itself, to mix in with the water. And as that happens, you can, we can argue back and forth exactly what it is, but it's going to work its way to, to being what they call heavy water, or water with extra neutrons, or you, you look at it whatever you want. But as that's happening, let's just say there's more hydrogen in this water, hydrogenated instead of oxygenated. And that churning effect is going to, every now and then, cause this thing to switch back and forth. So what we do here is at the height of the top of that, and again, I didn't draw it to perfect bit scale, so you have to forgive me. And I don't have a pen that's working very well right now. So let's go with the blue. All right, so at that height, we go ahead and we have a little scoop that catches this water, which is technically heavier because it bonds with it, than the other water. And it's going to pull this water into here. Now, how are we going to get that water up top? It actually winds up sucking it up. And it sucks it up because up here, and again, I didn't draw this to scale, and I have to kind of make these bend the wrong way because I'm not a perfect artist. At the same height, if this goes up to the Grand Gallery, there is a room that they call the Grotto. And in that Grotto, there happens to be another granite rock. And lo and behold, that granite rock is going to be acting like the other granite rock, and it is also going to be helping to bleed a gas. In this case, I'm going to tell you it's going to be hydrogen. And I tell you that because I just tell you that. No, I tell you that because the way Earth batteries work, the way the electricity travels, this one and this one are going to be identical right at the beginning. And this one being the shortest distance, it's going to be winning. But because as air or in this case oxygen, is bubbling up through this side of the equation, since these two are going to be a little V-shaped um, V shaped, uh, uh, I don't know, test tube, whatever you want to look at it. This water is going to be falling, and then this water is going to be falling. Since likeness things happen, this water is going to be kind of tugged on a little bit. 
When this gets tugged on a little bit, even a little bit, it's going to be kind of a little bit into a vacuum. And when it's kind of a little bit into a vacuum, it becomes the easiest path for those little electrons to go. And the water up here is easier separated. And when the water up there is easier separated, electrolysized, cracked, divided, uh, I don't care what word you want to put on it, decomposed, all the above, it's going to separate, and those gases are going to come out. Now, I believe that in the beginning, both gases are going to come out, because the way the grotto is shaped, when you really look at it and get in the pictures, it was engineered to accept both gases. But I do believe its ultimate goal is just hydrogen, and I do believe its ultimate it, it ultimately achieves that. It, it, and if there's every now and then an oxygen because the roll of the dice, hey, that happens. But as this scenario is occurring, and this is bleeding off whatever gas it's bleeding off, it's going to start sucking up the, the water out of this pool. And that is going to bring, elevate this water, which you're pounding and compressing and churning with extra hydrogen and or protons, which eventually will pop into neutrons and become the heavy water, into the mixture. It's going to work its way up into the system and as it works its way up into the system, you're going to get them up there. So you're actually going to start bleeding off instead of hydrogen, you're going to start bleeding off deuterium. And that deuterium is going to be piped out the holes that are drilled in the southern wall of the grotto that they say are in there so that they can stick their little scrolls or save them or whatever excuse they have. And they wind up going up to the top of the king's chamber, above the king's chamber in those relieving rooms where they find the seeds and the shells and the dust that they can't account for. I'm going to set the excuse that the seeds and the shells and the dust are the updraft that were coming from the grotto. Now from there, that gas fills the room and it actually works its way around and around the back and comes up into the king's chamber where they, they, they comment that the floor and the room are actually separated. That's to allow the gas to come up in at the floor line, which eventually will be underwater. But for right now, it comes up above the floor line. It enters into the room and it fills the room from the top down. As it fills the room from the top down, it's going to get to the point being the lightest of all gases, that it fills the conduit that goes up to and almost touches the wall of the um, pyramid itself. And I didn't draw this well enough, but there's a pre-chamber there that'll come into be important in a bit. And there's the grand gallery. We'll get into that. And again, I, I didn't draw this super well, so you're going to have to work with me. I'm a, not the world's best artist. I'm going to get rid of this conduit for right now, because it's so small it doesn't matter, so that we can get into the Queen's Chamber in a little more detail here. All right, so the hydrogen comes into the room, fills that, and actually starts bleeding out that one, which is the only conduit that ever actually penetrated these sides of the pyramid. Now, in doing this, this is where I believe oxygen did come up initially through here, because something had to jumpstart the system. And I'm assuming that, but again, when we get this into a CAD and I get somebody to actually follow the electrons and protons with the whole system, we'll find out. But I believe that initially that oxygen was coming out of here and filled the system and they were both coming out. Because that's kind of how I visualize it, but it doesn't mean that's how it had to be. But it, as time goes, with this static electricity, which is constantly out here, it's just been gathering up this whole time. And if you look at my pyramid phrenology video, you'll notice that there are they're not totally uniform, the steps. They do kind of have waves, and those waves are kind of concentrating the energy at this level. Now, I believe it's done that way intentionally, because it wants to 
get that static electricity outside there to kind of energize the static, the, the hydrogen within this conduit. And that hydrogen is going to work, it, that static electricity is going to work its way through the hydrogen because that's what static electricity does. It just, well, hydrogen just transfers the energy. And it's going to work its way down and into that room. And it's going to cause a spark gap eventually. And with the hydrogen on the top and the oxygen on the bottom, you're going to get an explosion. And that relates back to Chris Dunn, who says that him and his team have found evidence of explosion in the King's Chamber, but they can't figure out how, and it's not due to an earthquake. There's your reason for the explosion. Anyway, that is going to yield water. Now, when that yields water, water is wet, water goes down, gravity takes water down. And at this point, eventually, that burning together is going to cause a suction, and it's going to start just pulling in normal, everyday oxygen from outside. Because as the system fills up, as soon as the water fills up here and starts flowing into there, it's going to actually seal this off and the oxygen coming from here isn't going to be able to come up through there anymore. And if it does come up through there, it's not going to be, it's going to start lessen because this, the, the reaction is going to be taking its way between hydrogen there and oxygen here. And that is the system. This whole bit down here was just kind of a jump start the system. And as the reaction took over, the oxygen output is going to, and, and the consumption of the water is going to exceed the intake, or at least marry it, so that this water lo level starts coming down. So they, they needed some weight for the water hammer, but they don't need a lot, and they need it to actually come down. And you can see in the older pictures where in the down conduit there's sediment on the side, as far as that sediment was on the side, wherever it came down to, that was the average water level. You know, if there are a lot more pictures out there. I haven't seen them all, but we're working on it. So, where was I? We have water. Water's coming down. Water will actually come down. It'll come down through what they today call the Grand Step, but it used to be a funnel, and we've modified that, capped it off but that water would then be directed down the center of the channel. Now this is just getting the system rolling. We're nowhere near working yet. And this static electricity, while it may have jump-started the picture, we're not doing anything with it yet. It's still being there, and it's gathering enough up enough oomph that it's actually jumping over this gap and grounding itself and, you know, being a happy little static electricity. So we're not utilizing it yet. This pool of water in the Queen's Chamber fills up. And what I should tell you, back, I believe it was in the early 1900s, I'll, I'll check sometime, somebody climbed up through here and broke their way into the Grand Gallery. And doing that way, they destroyed the evidence of how I feel the Grand Gallery actually was. But the Grand Gallery came down, and where it protrudes off into the Queen's Chamber, that well shaft goes down, and there would have been two levels. Number one, there's a little dam, if you look at it, at the edge. You come up the stairs and you walk there, there's a little dam or ridge that goes across there. That was to keep what will eventually be the heavy water. And you can think of this like oil and vinegar. And the vinegar would come down and pour b below the oil and would fill into this pool, and it would never be able to get up over that bump because there was actually a spillway where it would spill down. And that was your constant water flow of the water which is being generated here and coming down. What is on top of that is going to be any of the water which separated out became hydrogen instead of being deuterium. It, it broke its energy, became normal water, condensates on the walls, comes down, pools as normal water, and that normal water actually winds up spilling off this side which runs down and joins into there which will be the bottom most well pit would have had kind of a false bottom. And that false bottom would have been shaped in such a way that the water would have sealed it and as more water came in it would run off and go down but it, it would not allow oxygen to go back unless it built up enough pressure that it forced it but I believe that's also compensated when 
I should do just a whole video on just that. But anyway, it's a whole switch and uh, control system, a flow control valve of itself there. But that would maintain the water level, and it would flow down and back into the system. And it would just keep doing this. And it would, as it would keep doing this, one thing we got to point out here is water, when it burns, is hot. It makes steam. It makes very, very hot steam that steam is going to work its way into the system as well. Now that steam is also gets shot straight across the room and gets thrown up into this what was hydrogen, pure hydrogen, and it's going to pick up some of that static electrical charge. And then it's going to work its way down. And pieces that they don't like to show you in tours, which would be nice when they do, is when it comes down here, it comes down and falls into a pit um, that they like to call the thieves shaft or the thieves tunnel off of the antechamber hallway. If you look at the top of it, it's a nice square edge. And it wouldn't be a square edge if thieves had done it. That's part of the system. And it's done that way so the steam that gets shot up into there collects that static electricity and kind of may collect on its own or may just come down because it gets heavier. But as it comes down, instead of it coming back into here because there's more being shot in, it kind of is forced down into the system. And so when it's forced down into the system, it collects in this side of the system and then comes out. Now, the reason it doesn't go back, they, they do say when they broke in there, they had to go through walls. And I believe those walls maintained a pool of water, and the pool of water would keep the gas from being able to get back, just like the way that the pool of water kept the gas from getting down or up into the system after this part fills up. This here, the antechamber to the king's chamber, is really your valve system that is going to let the water come out and flow down. It's also going to allow the water to come out and steam. This water is coming out and turning into steam and coming down and filling in through the system and working its way down. In addition to this, which was intentionally thrown up into there and force-fed into the static electricity and then comes down into the system. Now, when it comes down into the system, it's going to ride along the surface of that water because that's kind of like what static electricity does. And it winds up getting caught in that channel that goes down the Grand Gallery. And any time it wants to try to jump out, you've got pools of water along the side. So you're giving it kind of like running lights, a, a, a false dichotomy, if you will, of go here or there. You're controlling the variables. You're letting nature do the work, but you're controlling the variables by giving it limited choice. That lures the static electricity down and falls into the pool, or actually more to the point, on top of the pool, which is in the queen leads to the Queen's Chamber. Because there's more surface area in the Queen's Chamber, that static electricity is kind of gathering in the Queen's Chamber. And as the water level rides up, you're, you're pushing that static electricity higher and higher by normal water, um, which rides above the heavy water. The heavy water keeps primarily, well, not primarily, it does, every part plays 12 different pieces. 12 different roles, but the heavy water is also maintaining the heat that keeps the water more of a steam and, and uh, you know, than just chilled water. And it also retains energy. And eventually, I believe, this is my belief, hope, I guess, that we're going to find that somewhere in this mess, we actually get the magic tritium that works its way down. And when it's in the Queen's Chamber, let's discuss more about the Queen's Chamber, not just, uh, let's hit the static real quick. Static electricity, which is riding on the surface area of the water in the Queen's Chamber, you got to give it a yin-yang. That's what the conduits that came out of the Queen's Chamber, that's why they're right at the top of the, the uh, same elevation as the ceiling coming down the hallway. They are there because they are the yin-yang of the static electricity. And you milk it out. It went through the wall. 
I say it went through because we had to drill through five inches of, of rock. We went, had to drill through five inches of rock because it was a, fun uh, a funky crack in the rock. And they said, oh, there's a funky crack in the rock. And they drilled through the funky crack. And they said, hey, there's a hollow thing behind it. Well, that hollow thing behind it would have been a solution. And you can argue with Chris Dunn, go back to him, about what the solution was exactly. But it was a solution which would be willing to accept the little electrons, and that would be your transfer of el electricity. And then it would go down. We're going to find out when we send little robots up there eventually where that conduit goes. This point, I feel, it went down to all the litter of conduits that are underneath the Giza Plateau. There are three or four different tunnel systems, maybe even more, and I believe that they're going to be, you know, one of them is just going to be energized water, which is taking the static electricity, bringing it down. Now, on top of this, we can go more, because I think that magic tritium is going to go down as the system grows and grows and grows past the static electricity. And the well that they've since capped off, that was right underneath the niche, and the fact that the niche rides just to the side of the center, you have it so as the tritium turns into its resorts back to helium uh, 3 or whatever, helium 4 or whatever its magic thing that it does and it release, releases a little bit more energy, there you're also doing the yin-yang and it's got to go one way or the other and you give it two choices and again your full psychotomy, you, you give it your choice and on top of that, you want to go a step further as the water is condensating the steam itself, that conduit that goes down into the hallway, you notice how it does steps one way or the other. You're pushing it so that the energy, and I did mention hypothetically when this is there, I kind of think that the way it works, and I'm going to say it now just in case I find out to be right, that the exact mathematical center may not line up with the edge of this. And, and this is where, again, the, the math really helps to know the, the real answer. It's either in the center of this, along the edge of that, and I still, although I think it's too far to the side, think it's right at that one division wall where the bubble protrudes in. And up here, I think it rides with the second step up, the same place where you see the hydrogen up there, um, where the, the separation between hydrogen and deuterium is up there, because when that's popping out, when that um, pulled the electron from there to make this reaction occur, and that allows that energy to be released, you know, give it here, take it there, you got to yin yang, everything is yin yang, you're going to, well, I've, I've lost where I was going. Oh, I, I see the, the mass being to the other side, although that may be the physical center, I believe the center of the reaction is actually to the side there. And I also believe it not to necessarily line up with the division of the top of the pyramid, yes, that may be the center of the pyramid. Uh, I'm not sure if the math works out, although that's supposed to be like like a meter. I kind of, and, and this is where, again, I don't want to, I, I can only be where it can be, and although, I am totally stuttering. I, I think here it looks like it's just after the antechamber where there's would be the first division, I, I think there's a, a math equation there. And some of this may be skewed by the fact there are granite rocks on top of the antechamber, which may pull the equation in uh, by blocking some of the reaction or some of the reaction energy or pulling the energy out from the other side. I, I don't quite have all the answers yet. This is a great area of question. This one I, is pretty simple, but that's... Yeah, have I forgotten anything? Oh, as the normal water 
because as it releases its energy, that eventually as it works its way up and becomes heavy water, as the heavy water releases its energy and becomes normal water after it became hypernormal water, tritium, whatever you want to call it, it then saturates, becomes the pool on top, and runs over. This part here, there's more to this system, and I might as well stick it in here while I'm talking. There was a well. I erased it, but I think it was uh, somebody dug down that well, which they dug down to where the bottom of it, ironically enough, lined up with the bottom of this. Now, it wasn't done that way completely ironically, because magnetism shows no bounds. It, it, uh, the energy, when it came out of here, and it was looking for its place to go, this here is kind of acting like a telescope, and it sees this pool of potential water. It's pool to release its energy to, and it's magnified by this little telescope and the running water and all this other stuff adds to its freedom and, and uh, you know, I guess you could say this is falsely making a, a stint or a lost leader, is that what they call it? Lost leader is where it reaches up, stint is where it comes down, since whichever way it is. It is falsely giving it the impression to, to disperse your energy this way, along with you give it the running lights and you've got running water coming down and the whole nine yards. You're taunting the static electricity down through the system into the Queen's Chamber, tapping it out of the Queen's Chamber and then distributing it throughout the Kiva Plateau. Now that's just this one pyramid. Ready for the next one? 